everyone. I hope you all have had a fantastic week. This week in our nail art tutorial, I thought I'd do something really cute and fun with some of my favorite Swarovski crystals and a 3D nail charm as well. So to start off, I have started with a pink base. For my background, I have used the pink upvoted color in candy floss. I've done two coats cured both coats and I've wiped my inhibition layer off so we don't have that tacky layer. So we'll jump straight into it. I am going to center this design with our marbled pear charm. I'm going to pop a little bit of glue right in the center and then we're going to work around that. So with this, uh, if you have watched my previous videos, depending on the crystal or the charm that I use, I switch up between a hard gel and a glue. So if you're wondering what type of glue I use, I just use a, a you know your everyday nail glue, SNS glue. I've got a bit of lint. There we go. So pop that on. Still got that lint to get off. There we go. So make sure that's centered and that will start setting pretty, pretty quickly. There we go. So to surround them, I have some light rose and some light rose AB shimmer crystals as well. So you can see this is the light rose AB shimmer, which is super pretty. And then you've also got... Let's zoom in there. These are just your regular light rose crystals and both sizes are in an SS12. Let's just get that centered more. There we go. Now I'm going to pop a little bit more glue. Here and here. And I'm only using just as much as I need. So I'm going to pop a light rose here and pick up a light rose. It helps if you can see just like that. And then I'm probably going to go in with so right, right in this little gap. Just put you guys on pause just quickly because I had a massive truck just drive past the front of the house. All right, so with our light rose AB shimmer, I'm going to put one just there and one on the other side here. Just like that. And I'm just trying to determine whether I should put an 8 or a 5. I'm thinking let's go with our crystal SS5. So we've got our 8 here and our 5. So I'm thinking the 5 is probably going to be better suited just with the size of this nail and what we want to do. So tiny bit of glue with glue when you work with crystals only put enough for the actual size of the crystal that you're using so we're going to pop our five in there and pop a little five in there perfect now i am going to fill in all those little gaps with some caviar beads. Uh, I did pull out some silver, but then I realized that the pear is rimmed with a gold. So what I'm going to do is use our gold caviar. If you want to mix silver and gold, I mean, there's no real rules against it. You can 
definitely make that col combination if you want to. Now I'm going to use my 3D Sculpting Gel. Uh, I have talked about this in the past. It is a very, very, very thick gel. Um, I actually prefer using this gel with the caviar beads because they can be a little bit tricky to glue on. And this allows me to sort of move them around. And not only that, as I put the gel down, it sort of seals the crystals that are already there. So I'm just putting little blobs, I guess, in the corners where I think it needs it. There we go. Wipe the end of your dotting tool off and then you can very easily pick them up one at a time and you press them into the gel. I always tell people never ever top coat over your crystals but with things like charms and caviar beads you can top coat over them it helps seal them in and they don't lose their facets because they don't have any. But these are perfect little gap fillers and it just makes the design look I guess so much more whole but it always make it always eh, always also makes the design look that little bit more complicated as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a really fine liner because I think my dotting tool is too big for what I need it for now and I'm going to put a little bit of gel in here and a little tiny bit of gel in there. All right, grabbing our dotting tool again. Pop one in there, just one, not two. Perfect. So I'm going to cure that just to hold those beads in place and then I'll come back and show you how I top coat. We're back and fully cured. Our caviar beads and everything is firmly locked into place. And all you really need to do is top coat your design. Um, I do think this looks absolutely stunning in matte. So if you want to put a matte top coat over it, you could. But I am going to put a shiny gloss over it. So when you put your top coat down, I try and put a bit extra in the middle and then I wiggle the top coat up and you can see that it sort of just caps the sides you want to make sure you create a seal around all your crystals and then I do go a step further And I top coat the actual little beads. Because clients can be rough with them and scratch them so they can lose some of their colour. I mean, you wash your hands multiple times a day. So I do top coat over the actual charms. You don't have to if you don't like the look of it. I don't think it takes it away. I don't think you can tell it's top coated. Other than it's a little bit shinier. But yeah, definitely seal the edges of the crystals and then go over your actual caviar beads. Because it will keep them shiny and last much, much, much longer. And there you go. All you need to do is cure your final design. Um, but yeah, you can mix it up a little bit. We do have the white and the blue marbled, so you can change your theme. I think this looks absolutely stunning as it's a feature nail. So if your clients did want just like a plain pink and wanted to just dress up a nail, I mean, it doesn't take too long um, and it looks super effective, especially with the little caviar beads um, and the little crystals to tie in all the little gaps. So you can use this technique in so many ways as well. If you are ever wanting to do a Swarovski design and you think it looks a little bit plain, just pop some little caviar beads in between them um, and it 
definitely completes the design and brings it to a whole new level. So again, let me know what you all thought of this tutorial. Hopefully it's something that you guys can use and you enjoyed. Um, if you have any questions uh, about any of the products or any of the techniques I used, pop a comment below or jump onto our Facebook support group. It is always open to questions about any videos that I post that is Unicorn Lab support on Facebook or tag your recreations on Instagram. Um, it's just simply hashtag Unicorn Lab Now Supply. Um, and if there's any products that you want us to spotlight in any coming tutorials, let me know and um, I'll try my best to work them into our, our video tutorials. Other than that, again, hope you enjoyed this video. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you in next week's video. Bye.